the top secret Wave Rover time machine is activated by this little button. It worked! So now, I'm building a new boat. Smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. Ahoy Rovers! Well, I've activated the time machine because, well, for, for a few reasons. Uh, but first, I'd like to thank everybody who, in the last episode where I used the time machine and I asked for your opinions on the void spaces, both up forward and back aft, and you were absolutely marvelous with the amount of information you provided and the honest, uh, you know, attempt to give me the best advice that you could. And I really appreciated that. Now, of course, some of the advice was diametrically opposed, but that didn't matter. I read every single one and I have decided that I will proceed with enclosing the void spaces, putting an inspection hatch on top, so that was always the case, and then I will fill the forward ones with uh, empty water bottles inside a mesh bag so that I can take them out and investigate the area and see what it's like. I can always foam at a later date, but I can't unfoam, at least not easily. And back aft, I'm just going to make them void spaces for now. I may, I may do the same pop bottle uh, trick if I can get enough clean, empty water bottles. So that's, that's part of the reason that I'm uh, currently uh, activating the time machine. But there's another reason, and that is that I'm going to be asking you your opinion on several items, but I'm going to give you a boat tour. And as I come across those items, that's when I will, um, you know, it, it, uh, bring out the, the question. And hopefully you can respond again as you did in the last. Now, unfortunately, uh, Mrs. Rover hasn't been around for the last few days because she's in Edmonton and she's visiting her father who just turned 90. Happy birthday, Peter. And, uh, but but Glenda, Glenda's presence here really, really has been missed. But, in fact, she's most likely going to miss my birthday as well. But she did buy me a birthday present just before, and I'm going to share that with you. It's a new camera. It's the uh, DJI Pocket 2. And I'll be using that to film most of this episode because my GoPro, which had been giving me problems all along with horrible audio, crackling, popping sounds that I can't use, and also a number of times I've gone to activate it and it's, it's dead. And the reason it's dead was because it has a way of turning itself on and depleting its battery. Uh, finally, it wouldn't take a charge, which was a blessing in disguise because that gave me an opportunity to be rid of it. And But I was missing a camera that could um, do a lot of the jobs that I wanted the GoPro to do. So Mrs. Rover stepped forward and purchased this for me. Thank you very much, dear. Now, on with the rest of the episode. Well, Rovers, I'd like to do a shout out to another channel Breaking Waves News. Now they did a nice little video on the backstory of Wave Rover. Aiden, the man in charge there, he was able to take a lot of information that I gave him and condense it into a really tightly written uh, story about basically where my uh, experience comes from and what, what I've been doing and what I am going to be doing. Anyway, Rovers, we have a lot to do. We have a boat tour to start. It's time to crack on. So this whole area I just walked under, this is underneath the cockpit, the new cockpit design. And I'll just put a picture up for those who aren't familiar with it. So this whole area is decked over. More on that in a second. All right, so here's a void space. So let me just show you what will happen. So you'll be able to get right up here, and this is the transom that we're looking at right here. And then there's a big opening. And the reason for the big opening is so I can get my hands and really most of my body through this opening, and then I can tighten up screws for the mooring cleats and also for the push pet. Now, 
let me just change the angle slightly so here is the void space so I've just fitted this piece of plywood yesterday and I received these a couple of days ago these are the inspection ports they go like this and I'll be cutting it into this corner here and then this whole space which you can see by the surface areas is pretty big and then you can see by this area down here it it drops down probably 18 inches or more and that whole area is the void space now you'll see it in an upcoming video it's just very difficult to remove this to show you right now but underneath this piece of plywood there's also an extra support that's been glued in and that's for the skeg to support the skeg which we'll be getting to in uh, in a little while so there's the deck beam now from these deck beams uh, no one has asked but i guess maybe many of you know there's going to be longitudinal beams that are going to run up this way to support the actual deck because this space right here is just way too wide for uh, plywood anyway so we've got a port and starboard and then right about i'll have to duck down under this spreader so right about this point just at the end of these great big longitudinal bulkheads uh, that's where the aft end of the cabin starts so we have basically have six feet of space here now from from this edge really from where my hand is starting about here and going back about two feet is where the hatch is going to be occupied and then that hatch will come up against the back end of the of the uh, cabin now some of you in in the last episode when I had shown that flat area for the cockpit um, many of you understood and, and a huge number of you were supportive of the idea but some of you were a bit worried about safety and I've taken your concerns on board and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build two deck boxes that will be secured to the deck they'll be glued right to the deck and fiberglass and inside those boxes I'll have such things as uh, jerry cans, small jerry cans for the outboard engine gas and the series drogue will be located and mooring lines stuff like that will be located and hopefully I'll have a rendering I can put up and you can see what I'm talking about so that when you step out of the hatch there will be about a foot between the edge of the hatch and that combing or tow board or deck lock or whatever you might want to call it anyway there would be about a foot there so you're not going to slide very far and then of course there'll be a very very robust stern pulpit to to uh, that'll come right up to the cabin okay so then that brings us to the next section so I've um, initially I had the wrong screws they didn't uh, there's been supply issues all along so I had to take I I've, I've took them out and put in these smaller uh, bugle head screws that are countersunk and in this case they're just going to get covered with s1 two coats of s1 epoxy but in uh, if it was in an area that I would see I would fill them and then coat them so these are actually bulkheads um, that we're looking at these they're the lower portion of the bulkheads and then the bunk sits on top of these and then off of the bunk but directly above the next section of the bulkhead will start so let me see if I can get it here so right about here the bunk would go on top and then uh, building off of the bunk there's going to be a frame that will go up all the way and all the way over and support the deck so all of these are partially built but i couldn't proceed further until i got the uh bunk top built and and it it is built and after that i still couldn't install it because after i did that then we have to put fillets and fiberglass all along this edge and on the inside so we have fillets all the way down and fillets all the way across so there's a lot of uh, little things that one has to do before you can proceed but those are done now and the next step after i finish the, the uh, void spaces is to uh, 
give two coats of S1 to the inside of all these spaces, then get the, get the bunk top down, and that won't take long. So one of the things I wanted to ask you guys was, when you take a look at this space right here, I mean, it's, it's almost, well, it's almost four feet from, from the bilge area to where the deck is, and it's all mostly covered over. And this will be a terrific spot for me to put my tender, which I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that I have to go with an inflatable because I just don't have enough deck space to get a proper uh, hard uh, body dinghy, not on such a small boat. And so I I've, I've went online very briefly, and they do make a number of 7'6 inflatables, and they're, uh, which is 2.3 meters. And so those will fold down into a small package and should fit in here. What I want to know from you guys is if you have any experience with a brand or something you think I'd be happy with, uh, that would be terrific. Let me know in the comments. And, uh, you know, if any of you are actually involved in those companies, well, let me know if they're interested in... Uh, in doing some sort of promotion with Wave Rover and possibly the Wave Rover builders. So that's the first one is try to help me find a tender that'll work in this area. Of course, you know, it's not inflated at this point. So part of the beauty of the inflatable, just so you know where the, where the uh, brainstorming came on that, well, we're going to have an outboard anyway, and it just needs to be a small outboard because we're just using it as an auxiliary for the boat. We're not using it as, you know, something to power through a force 10 storm. So we're, it's just a small thing, 2.3 horse. It's very light. So that will be the, um, that will be the power source also for the dinghy because those dinghies are horrible to row. And I have had an inflatable kayak before, by the way, and I'll not go back to that. So that so now we're up forward here and we're looking at the galley slash chart table. So again, I have to finish these off pretty quickly because a number of bulkheads and all that are built off of the surface. So uh, they're all set. They've all been fiberglassed in place and filleted on the bottom. And if I must say so myself, a very neat filleting job around the oak beams. So the question is on this area, where would you put your stove and sink and where would you put your nav table? Like part of me thinks it really doesn't matter, but uh, this is where arrogance comes in. You know, it's best to ask. It's best to find out. Maybe there is a good reason why galleys are preferred on one side over the other. Bear in mind that the purpose of Wave Rover is really to cross oceans. And in, in that sense, you know, we're, we're talking about a downwind trade wind uh, course for most of its most of her life. So uh, that's where that's where. Uh, yeah, so, th so that's the question. Let me know what you think on that one. Now, right forward of this galley area. So we're, you know, I have this temporary spreader here. I have a straight edge here. They're all just temporary holding this, which is a, the lower portion of the forward bulkhead, one of the forward bulkheads. This bulkhead is going to be a watertight bulkhead. So I'll be building it up uh, so that it'll have a hatch on it and the hatch will be closable which will close off this whole forward section which is uh, easily eight feet so that whole section will be a waterproof well a watertight area and then i forgot to mention back aft here we also will be doing the same thing somewhere right about where the back of the hatch is uh, we'll be putting a bulkhead in and making this a watertight space as well. So the boat will really be broken into three very clear watertight compartments. And, you know, we can, uh, in heavy weather, you can close those hatches and, uh, you know, possibly prevent uh, a big failure. Anyway, uh, that's that's it for the water watertight hatches forward of the watertight hatch I'm going to have there's enough room right here 
right exactly forward to have five uh, five ten liter containers. I'm I'm going with these ten liter uh, water containers, and uh, because ten liters is well, okay, let me just back up. So last time I went with 20 liter containers. Now those 20 liter containers are just too heavy. They're, they're over 40, they're like 45 pounds, you know, so they're a little unwieldy um, when you're, when the boat is moving around a lot. Well, when the boat isn't moving, I mean, it's no big deal. You can lift 45 pounds, no problem. But when there's movement, it's a, it's a recipe for uh, hurting yourself. So this time around, I'm going with 10 liters. That's no problem. And I'll have, I want to have a total of at least 120 liters on the boat, which for me means at two liters a day, 60 days voyaging at the very least. So I'll have five up there. And these beams, as you can imagine, the three beams, they uh, indicate where the keel is, which will be the center of lateral resistance. So if I have five forward, I better have at least five aft, and I will. So uh, again, using these spaces here, I can get two in here, and the same on the other side. So that brings us to nine. And I can easily put two more in here, but I may not. I may opt to put two inside the galley area on each side, which I can do. So that sort of would really give my give myself a sense of balance, having five forward of there and the rest aft. And of course, you know, on a small boat, uh, those things do matter a bit, but you can place ballast and yourself is ballast, you know, like... I weigh more than those five li five containers of water, so at least I think I do, and uh, so I, I will be not emptying all of those in one go and then switching to another. I'll always be trying to maintain a balance throughout the boat. So that's uh, that's basically the the tour I wanted to give you, and I wanted to let you know that a lot of progress has been made. And I strongly, strongly believe, I said this to the builders group last week, we have a private Wave Rover builders group uh, for folks who've bought plans and are intending to build. I strongly believe that this boat can be built in about 500 hours. Uh, that, that's just the boat, of course, you know. And if you start doing a huge number of details, well, that's going to really slow you down quite a bit. So I think if you just keep things more or less the way I've been doing. You'll have a boat in approximately 500 hours. You'll still have a number of items like kitting the boat out that you'll have to do, but that that can always be done, you know, on the water. Well, Rovers, thank you so much for indulging me with the time machine. Now, I would really appreciate some input on those questions, A, about the tender, finding a small, reliable uh, tender, inflatable tender, and B, on the placement of the galley slash chart table. Now, um, I also would like a little bit of input on what you think of the new camera that Mrs. Rover got me. Uh, you know, how uh, do you think it's worthwhile that I should continue shooting uh, a lot of video with it? Did you, did you like? Did it look smooth? Anyway, I'd like to get a little bit of feedback on that. Next week, we'll be back to our regular broadcasting schedule where I'll pick up where I left off and continue on the build in the progression that I've been following. So until next time, thanks for watching. Well, Mr. Speckles and I would like to take a moment to thank all the Wave Rover patrons whose pledges of support help power the Wave Rover project. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. <laughs>